really excited that uh, marching season has been as great as it's been and that uh, things are winding down. And I know that directors have different philosophies on how to handle that transition from the end of marching season over to the beginning of concert season. And I know some directors would say, what are you talking about transition? We do concert band all the time. And I know that your program and our program did that, but really just trying to redirect the students focus so that they're not just waiting until, you know, that next summer, that there's, there's definite goals and things that can help engage them. And um, I know, you know, I tried a lot of different things and I guess for me, just to kind of get started here, I think trying different things each year is not a bad thing. Um, Alfred Watkins told me many years ago that the key to keeping seniors in your program all four years was to make sure that every year was a little bit different so that they felt like they had something to look forward to. So um, we did a lot of different sorts of things to, to try to make that happen during that transitional time going into the, the winter and the spring months. So well, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think um, one of the things you can think about right away is if you're looking back at your season, um, especially musically, thinking about where you maybe heard comments from the adjudicators that um, where they thought you were maybe uh, not quite as strong as you could be. Um, well, here's a great opportunity to get to work on those kind of things uh, with the with the concert bands indoors. Uh, I really believe that the, the key to a great marching program is a great concert program. And I know that you agree with that, Randy. And I think that um, starting right off thinking, what are the things we need to work on uh, as wind players, as percussionists, and, and not just starting the concert band season, but starting a continuation of what we've already been working on and anything that we felt like didn't get where we wanted it to be, uh, whether it be the way our kids listen to intonation, uh, maybe we want them to play more musically. Maybe we want them to be more aware of the people on either side of them. Maybe we want them to hear someone other than themselves more often when they play. Now, those are all things that are easily tackled uh, in the concert band setting, sometimes way more easily than in the marching band setting. So um, it's not just about pulling out the, the concert literature. I think it's about continuing to improve your program. And if you think of marching band as just another extension of your program where you want to teach kids to be better musicians, I think we just dig right in with a concert band. Now, the other thing I'm going to mention, too, and this is something that um, I really encourage directors to think about. When you start pulling out the concert literature, if you're not one of those groups that, that rehearses concert band during marching season, and let's say you're making that transition, be careful about the literature that you start with. You, you want your kids to be excited when they play their first couple of concert pieces, not thinking, oh no, here we go, concert band again. And whenever I hear directors say, boy, my kids just really don't enjoy concert band, you know, I think of, and, and Randy, I think you would agree, I think of some of the literature that's out there, even some of the easier literature, depending on uh, what talent level you have, that fires up kids to wanna play. There's great literature out there. So I think that's really important that in making that transition from marching to indoors, that we continue to think about our kids. And I'm not talking about playing pop literature or, or things like that. I'm talking about playing uh, legit band literature uh, that gets kids excited. And I think that's another way that you can make a, a really healthy and positive transition from marching band to concert band. So start out with some pieces that are exciting, um, no matter what level, whether they're grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, whatever, uh, find something that you know the kids are going to be into to get started so they don't feel like it's a letdown coming out of marching season, which I'm, unfortunately, I know some kids do feel that way when they go to concert band. Yeah, and I know if if I was in that situation, the first thing I would think is, okay, it, it might be me. Maybe I'm not excited about it. Maybe I don't have enough tools in my tool belt to, to help them get better. And that's why they're not getting excited rather than just saying, just dismissing it and saying, well, it's um, it's just not for them. If the process, and there's that word again, if the process is what's important through the course of the calendar year, then regardless of whatever activity you're doing, whether it's jazz band, concert band, marching band, pit orchestra, whatever it is, the process, if that's a constant, 
then I think you find a lot less issue with students being turned off by the by the activity. They may have certain things that they enjoy more. Maybe they're into jazz a little bit more, but it's how we present that and, and help broaden their perspective. Um, one of the things that we used to talk about a lot is teaching students to be connoisseurs of music. You know, we we spend a lot of time teaching them to be performers, but let's face it, if we don't develop the audience base, then who are we performing for 20, 30 years from now? Great point. So, yeah, so so taking kids to an orchestra concert, taking them to hear a professional band, very, very important as part of their experience, teaching them, you know, about the literature. Maybe there's an historical perspective. Um, you ever want to try to get AP credit with your wind ensemble, then you need to do some of those writing research type things for the kids where they have to delve into the composer, the background history of the piece, things like that. There's a whole, and even on the, even on the stuff that, that are grade three, grade twos. I mean, there's a reason sometimes why those pieces are written, you know, the, 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 the level of the work is often dictated by whoever commissioned it and the, the level of players they have. That doesn't make it, made it, make it any less significant in terms of what it meant to that ensemble or to the person that maybe it was written for or whatever. So just understanding that and using that as a broader base for educating students, I think is really, really important. Agree, agree completely. And I also think, um, don't forget, this is another great time too, to look for your student composers, you know, uh, kids that uh, maybe enjoy trying to write, uh, helping that in that area. Uh, in this area, it's a little easier during concert band season to get those kids involved than it is during marching season. Um, and uh, you know, get get a piece or two that uh, your your students have worked on and play with your group. Uh, just find these different ways to get your kids involved and engaged. And I think they're going to find that uh, band in general is really cool, not yeah. just not just marching band. Yeah, absolutely. Student conductors too. You know, <laughs> yes, for senior. sure. You've got a senior that's thinking about going into music ed, you know, let them conduct a march on a concert, you know, that's um, that gives them the opportunity to kind of discover what that's like. And and uh, there's all sorts of creative ways you can do that. So uh, just be creative. I guess that's the the big message here. Be creative and and um, focus on good sound educational things that are going to help your kids grow. And, and, and that transition will be a lot smoother for you. Yeah, keep the energy going. That's that's the main thing too. If they sense a lack of energy from you on the podium, coming out of marching season, they're going to have a lack of energy. So we gotta we gotta keep you know whether we like it or not, we have to be salesmen and saleswomen every once in a while, you know. And uh, so let's make sure we're doing that coming out of marching band as we move into the next kind of literature. Absolutely. Well, thanks for your time this morning, Richard, and thanks everyone for joining us on Tuesday morning for Coffee Talk. And we'll see you next week again for another episode. Take care. Thanks, Randy. Have great rehearsals, everybody.